In this video, I'm going to take you through how to create a histogram. Histograms are great for understanding how your data really lies and really looking more at that, that distribution of the data, where the center of the data is and how wide your distribution is. So let's take a look at a scenario. Let's suppose we have a bank manager and they're really worried about the complaints that they're getting with respect to the long queue times. So their customers are coming in, they're having to wait a long time at the branch. So the manager wants to look at the frequency of the major customers waiting times. We've got data then on 25 different customers waiting times. We can use the histogram then to look at how long the average wait time is. So to do this, we're going to create a histogram. The first thing that we're going to do is make sure that we have the data analysis tool pack added in. To do that, we're going to go to our file tab and then down to options. Then we'll have a window that pops up and we're going to select add-ins. At the bottom, we have a drop-down menu that has manage for Excel add-ins. We'll select go. And then if your analysis tool pack is not selected, you're going to go ahead and check that one and then select OK. I'm going to cancel out of it since I already have it installed on my computer. So now what we can do is take our, our data and then create our histogram. Under our data tab, when we select that, we now have, since we added in the data analysis tool pack, our data analysis tab. We'll select data analysis. And then with our pop-up window, we're going to select histogram as our option and then select OK. Our input range is going to be all of our data. I'm going to select B6 all the way down then through cell B31. And then I'll select the down key to accept that or I could select enter. Bin range will be left empty. The labels I'm going to select because I included cell B6 in my tab, which is where I had the label at the top of that row, or sorry, top of that column. I'm also going to change where my output range is because I want to make sure that my histogram appears on the same worksheet as my data. So I'll select output range. And then I'm going to scroll up, and I want it pretty close to the top of my data, so I'm going to select cell D6. And then I'll hit Enter. Since I'm creating a histogram, I do want the chart output, so I'm going to select Chart Output, and then OK. What this gives me is my breakdown by bins. With a histogram, it's going to look at the frequency of data that falls within my specific bins. With Excel, it doesn't necessarily give me my bin range, but it gives me the minimum value in each bin range. So for example, my first bin is value 2.15 up to, but not including, 2.81 minutes. So within that bin, I had one value that fell in that range. My histogram also represents that same information. It's only giving me the minimum value in my bin, but we have to understand then that it gives me the information up to, but not including the next bin range. With my histogram, again, it's going to give me the information about the shape of my distribution, if it's centered, where the center of the data falls, and if there's any really anomalies. So let's first look at our graph and see what we want to change about our graph. While it is a histogram, we would want to have it, our, our chart, our graph, show more descriptive titles and more descriptive information. So we can double click our heading and we can change the name of it. And I would change it to something more descriptive such as histogram of customer wait times. I can also change what's on my x-axis for my bins and I just click on bin and then I can go in and change that. 
and we want to make sure that anybody can understand our charts. So I would want to have more information such as this is our waiting time and that is in minutes. So again, more descriptive so that anyone can read our chart and understand that information. So with our histogram, it gives us quite a bit of information. With our histograms, it gives us quite a bit of information, as I mentioned, such as the centering. So we can see that we have a peak around 3.47 minutes for our customer waiting time. However, the majority of our customers are waiting more than four minutes. And there's quite a bit, our largest column, our largest frequency is with customers that are waiting more than our highest bin. So in this case, it does show that our customers waiting times are an issue and we get an idea of approximately how long our customers are waiting and where our data is spread out.